Uh, so Stefan will talk about deeply embedded ML-based radar, hand gesture recognition uh, that is work done at Infineon. So Stefan, please go ahead. <laughs> Thanks for the kind introduction. So uh, in this talk, I present the implementation of a radar-based hand gesture recognition demonstrator using machine learned algorithm running on a tiny microcontroller. So why does that not switch? Ah. So let me give you a short overview on just one example, which shows why we think radar-based gesture sensing makes sense from an application point of view. So nowadays, uh, touch screens have become common in many public places where we need to interact with machines, for example, in public transport, restaurants, public libraries, just to name a few. On the other hand, uh, public touch, touch screens are significantly a uh, safety hazard, hazard in times of COVID-19. So the linked study concludes that 80% of the participants consider them as uh, unhygienic and 50% would even avoid interaction with them, which means the potential loss of customers in revenue. And one solution to the problem might be to regular disinfect the displays but this is labor intensive and not practical at scale. Um, speech and vision-based human machine interfaces don't very, work very well in public spaces due to difficult uh, lighting conditions or strong background noise or uh, privacy concerns. Um, this slide uh, basically summarizes the functionality we built into the demonstrator. Um, as you can see in the video sequence on the right, the demo can detect and classify three different hand gestures, just enough to navigate through a basic UI that might be displayed on a screen. In order to make things simple, we just signal the detected gesture using the LED on the board. The used algorithm uh, has also the capability to reject unknown gestures to a certain extent. The whole application works on a total of uh, 200 kilobytes of RAM. This includes buffers for raw data, pre-processing results, neural network arena, and the neural network weights. Um, the application is using 70% of compute time on the Cortex-M4 microcontroller running at 150 megahertz clock rate. And the classification accuracy in presence of unknown gestures is around 90%. Um, here you can see an overview on the used algorithm. The, the pre-processing pipeline involves many costly FFT transformation, which yield the range, velocity, and angle spectrograms over multiple frames. This is the input vector to our conventional, uh, uh, to our convolutional neural network, which can predict which gesture was performed in front of the sensor. On details on this algorithm, I recommend the reference book from which I also took the image actually. This slide shows the libraries we used and the data types to uh, represent the data. As you can see, we use float32 for the pre-processing. Actually, we try to reduce the pre precision to 16-bit as pre-processing currently consumes nearly 90% of our CPU time. Unfortunately, reducing the precision in the pre-processing constantly also reduced the capability of the network to classify the per performed gesture by some significant percent. On the other hand, we found that quantizing the neural network to 8-bit did not affect the classification accuracy too much. Um, using the optimized um, SEMSIS, neural, uh, SEMSIS NN and the Cortex-M4 vector instructions, we were able to cut down the memory footprint and the execution time for the neural network part by nearly of a factor of four. Um, so with this final slide, I summarize your key takeaways from this talk. Radar sensors are well suited for human machine interfaces. Um, small neural networks are capable to classify radar sensor outputs efficiently and pre-processing performance is still a major concern on today microcontrollers. Yet, finally, importantly, I want to thank to the colleagues who contributed to the projects and I wish you a nice evening. And obviously I'm now open for questions and answers. Thank you, Stefan, quite an interesting talk. Um, uh, I had one question actually. Uh, you mentioned the problems of pre-processing. Uh, would, uh, would a DSP processor with some sort of filter embedded along with a microcontroller or an FPGA with a microcontroller on it to do the pre-processing uh, work in this case? Um, for sure, but on the other hand, we are looking for a, a low-cost solution. So, I mean, uh, the, the 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 ARM Cortex family has some basic DSP instructions, so it 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 can do a, a floating pi point uh, multiplication in a single cycle. 
And um, if you go to, uh, to integer processing, this would actually be a significant boost. And then you could basically actually use also basic vector instructions. Um, yeah, but uh, this, this didn't work out for now. However, larger, larger microcontrollers also have vector instructions for the float. So yeah, I mean, this would definitely help. Okay. Uh, there are actually two questions from uh, the audience. One, it's uh, uh, from where did you gather the data? Um, actually, this is uh, this was um, it's our own data set. Basically, we just basically um, yeah used the radar sensor to just record the data and uh, and label it. And, okay. Yeah. I would like to acknowledge again. Uh, our sponsors, uh, the sponsors are the ones that actually uh, made this, uh, made having a free registration for everybody possible, starting by Newton.ai, uh, who is innovating into the automa automated uh, tiny ML uh, domain, uh, who's also our, our um, uh, uh, premier sponsor. Next, we have the executive sponsors. Uh, we have ARM which as you know, builds from both the, of to our and the hardware foundations for TinyML. Uh, we have Edge Impulse, who is uh, advocating strongly, as you all know, for uh, TinyML available to all of the developers. And of course, Qualcomm, uh, who is working as, you know, among other perception, reasoning and action and Edge uh, and cloud devices in various sectors, such as uh, the internet of things, automotive and mobile applications. Uh, and Sintiant, who is moving artificial intelligence from the cloud to the edge, which as you have seen today, uh, it's quite now the trend nowadays. Uh, next, we have our Platinum sponsors, uh, Infineon, part of your life, part of tomorrow. We have seen a few of their projects uh, that they work today. We have Reality AI, uh, who is working also in pre-building, uh, in pre-built edge AI sensing modules and tools. Uh, next, we have our gold sponsors. Latent AI is the first one who works on adaptive AI for the intelligent edge. Then we have SenseML, which works on building smart IoT sensor devices uh, from uh, uh, various data. And last but not least, our silver sponsors, uh, EMSA from Israel, Greenwaves, uh, HOTC, Majimop, Quixo, Seed, Studio, and of course, ST uh, Microelectronics. And uh, having said that, I would like to point out to you guys that this, uh, all the talks that we've seen today will be made available offline in our YouTube channel. Uh, you can find a lot more information, watch this and uh, watch the talks that we have today and also find out how to join uh, the tiny ML community either through the local meetup groups or through uh, the foundation's activities at www.tinyml.org. So I would like to thank everybody that stuck around until now, and I hope to see everybody tomorrow at 4 o'clock Central European time.